We were in the industrial revolution age in the 19th century. You know, the 20th century is, you know, we called it the information age, right? It's about bits and bytes and ones and zeros. And, and the first hundred years of computing have all been about a paradigm of processing information, which can be pretty fast compared to humans without machines. But it's actually nothing like the speed you would get out of uh, what we think is going to happen in the 21st century, which is we think the, the next 100 years is going to be about the quantum era. So industrial revolution, information era, you know, quantum era. And quantum computers fundamentally are so powerful because all of the little, let's call them gates inside the machine, instead of operating in series like a classical computer, the quantum computer allows them to operate in parallel. So all sorts of problems with huge complexity and you know dozens of digits of combinations to sort through can actually be done in parallel. Amazingly, even the fundamental tenets of all online cryptography, uh, which is the RSA algorithm, is actually crackable by something like 4,000 algorithmic qubits in a, in a quantum computer. So now we're not at 4,000 today, you know, we're at 20 or 30 with INQ, but believe it or not, quantum computers are so powerful that once you get to about 75 algorithmic qubits, you can compete with the world's top 10 fastest classical supercomputers at a much lower cost base. And after 75 qubits, you know, you overtake anything the world has ever seen. So to give you an example of, of a problem that quantum computers are awesome at solving, there's something uh, called the traveling salesperson problem that you've both probably heard of. So it's like, what order should Amazon deliver packages on for every truck uh, every morning? And believe it or not, you know, UPS, FedEx, Amazon, Walmart, Target, large e-commerce and delivery companies can save hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars if you can optimize those routes. Now, to solve that problem every morning for a company of that size will take the world's fastest classical computer something like six or 12 months. So obviously it doesn't, doesn't work, right? That's not how those companies operate. You can't solve the traveling salesperson problem if you're Amazon or FedEx every day. You have to follow other rules that are less efficient. But a quantum computer with you know, 30 or 40 algorithmic cubics could actually solve that problem in minutes. So you could do it every morning for one of these companies. The same sort of power can come to drug discovery, can come to making more efficient solar cells, can come to making you know, more efficient fertilizers, as you heard, and of course can come to aerospace, national security, and the battlefield of the future. So quantum computing is actually of vital national security interest, and it is of, I would argue, existential interest in every field of applied science for every industry of significance. I'll give you one more example, and I'll stop talking for a second, Chris, but like, if you are a large financial services organization or your large insurance company, trying to price a portfolio, trying to price risk, trying to drive options pricing, these sorts of algorithms can be done with only 30 or 40 algorithmic qubits, which is something we think INQ will be able to do in probably 2024. So we're only two or three years away from early quantum, you know, I'd say advantage. And then broad quantum advantage when you take on supercomputers is probably only five years away. So this is gonna come up in everybody's life sooner than we think. INQ has brought forward the era of broad quantum advantage from where we thought it would be a few years ago to, from, from late 2030s to mid 2020s. And this is why the time is ripe to launch the world's first pure play quantum computing company with over $650 million of, of new fresh capital that we've brought in courtesy of DMY technology. Yeah, perfect. The rise of cloud computing has fundamentally changed the ability of INQ to drive real revenue in the next three or four years, even before the truly powerful world-changing machine comes online. And the reason for that is, you know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, we just have to connect to them and they have customers and they have an efficient path to market for us and, a, and an efficient revenue share model for INQ. So, all, you know, what, what INQ is focused on uniquely is just building the best machine we can every year. You know, 20 years ago, if you'd been Cray, you had to spend a lot of your energy on building machines and shipping boxes all over the world. INQ doesn't have to do that. We just have to build one great machine and rent out time on it through the cloud to other customers. So there's really two big sources of revenue for, for INQ. One is through the, through the cloud. And I would say that the revenue we're seeing is growing, you know, tens of percent a month. We have some months through the cloud that's growing like 40% month on month. We have 
the same kind of lumpy, spiky revenue through the cloud that I remember seeing, believe it or not, when I took over at Glue in the early days of the Apple App Store. So there's kind of like a new App Store platform that's gonna happen, we think, uh, using INQ's machines as developers around the world are using their APIs and starting to write you know, new software applications. They will also be able to sell whole systems to friendly governments and maybe some of the biggest companies in the world. But fundamentally what quantum computing is gonna do is it's gonna bring down the cost of supercomputing power for everybody in the world. So right now, if you want access to a top 10 global supercomputer, you have to spend probably a billion dollars on the hardware and then millions of dollars a month, you know, just, just electricity costs to run the thing. What we're gonna do in the next three to five years is bring that cost down to something that you can afford effectively on a credit card. And then we'll give you more and more power in the palm of your hand effectively through the cloud than, than you, can, you, you can even access today in the world's top 10 supercomputers, right? So it, it really will change the world, Chris, and it's gonna save a lot of lives. Like existential decisions for companies are gonna happen with quantum computing because also I'd point out, Chris, the power of quantum computing, it increases exponentially, not just by a factor of two like Moore's law, but if you double the number of qubits, so going from you know say 32 to 64 qubits, it increases by two to the power of the difference in the number of qubits. So it's a, it's an enormous difference, right? So, you know, two to the 32 is a number with, you know, like 19 digits or something crazy like that, right? And so the difference between a 32 and a 64 and a 128 and 256 qubit system from INQ is literally the difference if you're an algorithmic trader at a bank and you're optimizing, you know, I don't know, portfolio or options pricing. It's the difference potentially between making like no money <laughs> that year if you don't have access to the new system and obviously, you know, making vast, you know, super profits if you happen to be the firm that has, you know, access or even exclusive access potentially if you paid for it.